What's going on everybody, it's Chris. Welcome back to another simulation, just reacting to the 2020 new schedule released by the ACC. Go ahead and hit that like button if you guys like these simulations and be sure to subscribe. Taking a look at Louisville and Miami, 2020, real rosters. Reason why we're doing this is because the new schedule came out and Miami is scheduled to play at Louisville. Two teams met last year, 52-27 win by Miami. However, the things that stand out to me with Louisville is their speed at the skill positions. And I think anytime you have that, you're always a threat to win any game. So let's take a look at it. Only one quarter of action. Reason why that is, is simply just to give you guys a quick look at the team, at the rosters. Check out the graphics, the uniforms, and we can talk about the opponents. And one thing I've been asking you guys is, if there's other opponents that you'd like to see in these simulations whether Miami faces them or not go ahead and drop a comment let me know what teams you're interested in seeing it's a huge help okay so taking a look here number three it's Mikhail Malik Cunningham he's gotten by both names his first name and middle name first to go by Mikhail right now and he is absolutely phenomenal very talented player very fun to watch and the thing that stands out to me, I mentioned the offense, the skill players, and their speed. But the thing is, anytime teams return players that have been productive, you always have that chance to really elevate your game. You know, you can't, typically it's not wise to just look at what they did the year before and assume that's exactly what they'll do the next year. They seem to show improvements in college football. Just a general rule of thumb. However, obviously things do change. That doesn't always happen. My point is, Mikhail's got a lot of experience. He's shown flashes. He's had good games. MVP of the bowl game last year. Certainly a threat to take that game to the next level. Dual threat ability. And plenty of options to go to. And this one right here, number 10, Jamie Hawkins. Over 1,500 yards rushing last year, which was third in the ACC. And you know the names ahead of him with A.J. Dillon at Boston College and Travis Etienne at Clemson. So the fact that Hawkins did that, had that monster breakout season, was certainly impressive. So that's the thing. When Miami faces these guys, the key will be able to contain the running game, contain Cunningham at quarterback position with the passing game and the rushing attack. And with that passing game, you guys know his name, Tutu Atwell, number one out of Miami Northwestern. You guys have been following his career. He's been doing big things. And that's another one of the receivers. That's Fitzpatrick, number seven there. But number one, Tutu Atwell, big time player. Led the ACC in receiving last year as a sophomore. Over 1,200 yards, 70 catches, 12 touchdowns. You guys have been following his career. Won that state championship. Leading the Bulls there in high school. I don't think there's any question that it's tough to see him do his thing for a different team other than the hometown squad. But it is what it is. Okay, so here's Hawkins again up the middle. And I definitely think that with the way last game went against these two, two teams, you know, Louisville showed some flashes on offense early, but Miami really got out to that great start. 21-7 in the first quarter at home and just essentially piled on after that. Good offensive performance by Miami. Louisville never really able to stop them. Score got away from them. And that's going to be the thing for Louisville. Talk about their strength. Their things they need to improve on is that defense. But they return a lot of guys. So if you're Louisville, you're hoping to see improvements there. And shout out to anybody from Louisville, any Louisville fans out there checking this out. Definitely appreciate you doing that. And that's a great play right, right there. Gervin Hall. Read out the option that Cunningham goes ahead and keeps it. And I think that's a play that, that's going to be a key for Miami to be able to stop, to get those safeties out, make tackles on the ball carry, regardless if it's a quarterback or running back. And that's something that 
safeties coach Ephraim Banda has always Oregon's preached as a priority field. for what as he looks for in a safety, either in the recruiting ball. process or on his current teams, really strongly believes in safeties That's and their ability to tackle. So if you want to say, why is so-and-so playing at safety? How can they get more playing time, things like that? I would always point to that tackling thing if they're making their tackles or not because it's such a focal point for the Miami defense, for Coach Banda, that safeties must be able to tackle. And the Miami staff has actually talked about the safeties being such a key position in college football moving forward with the way teams are constructed and how you'll, you, you will need to counter offenses and they believe in safeties being such a key point. So when they get a guy like James Williams to commit, it's definitely a huge thing for Miami because that position such a key point and what they want to do as a defense. So here we go. Miami's offense does a lot on Miami's defense. So here we go. Jalen Knight can get that first catch. It's good to see. I definitely would like to see Miami utilize a number of their running backs this season with Cameron Harris, Don Chaney Jr., and Jalen Knight. And I believe in all three of them being able to bring something to an offense. I think the abilities are there, and I don't think there's a massive separation between all three to where you only stick with one guy. So I think rotating them in, and that includes the return game. I think they could be used as kick returners to give them some more touches. I think if you want to use one as a punt returner, I think the most likely one is Jalen Knighton. Has a little bit more shiftiness to him. Again, it's just a way to get the running backs more involved. So here we go. D, D Wagons with a nice catch. You know, one thing that, that I would say about D and, and definitely expecting him to have a good year, but one reason why I believe it's so important for him to be productive is because Miami does not have a lot of size at the receiver position. You know, Mark Pope is in that six foot 180 range, you know, 185, whatever, you know, in that range. Mike Harley, close to 5'10". So and doesn't have that bulk that you're looking for in terms of being a bigger receiver. Obviously, he does things well. Jeremiah Payton is also in that that slender mold at maybe 6'1". Whereas Wiggins has that size, the speed combination, which is great. But also, you know, he's, he can get off the line with jams. And as a bigger receiver... Miami just does not have a lot of those guys. You know, Keyshawn Smith is a freshman who I'm excited about, but again, he's not. He's more in the Jeremiah Payton mold physically. So I think it is important, and also I think it's important for Miami to try to land some of those bigger receivers just to give you a different look as an offense. And, you know, just looking at their recruiting class. Jacoby George, Romello Brinson, again, in that Pope Payton kind of mold. And then Burchard Smith, a slot receiver, who's about 5'9", so not the biggest receiver as well. But we'll see how it works out. Obviously, speed is important when you're talking about the receiver position. And my point is really just to give the offense more of a look, more options. Just like if you had, conversely, if you had it the other way, if you had a bunch of bigger receivers, you'd want more of that slot, the shorter, faster, quicker receiver as well, just to blend in and have a different mix for the offense. But here we go. Miami's on the move. Happy to see this. 25-yard line here. Almost at the 24. Second and six. D'Eric with that nice run, which is good to see. That's a big-time catch. Definitely very curious to see how D'Eric performs in the red zone for Miami. He's been very good at Houston. 
the numbers back it up. You can check that out on InsideTheU.com. There's been articles about that on there. So this is interesting. I know you guys, some of you guys like to see more than a quarter done that at times. But this one is just going to be one quarter of action. I know it's scoreless. I know Miami's on the move. And only 30 seconds left, and we'll see what happens before it gets cut off here. So first and goal at the 10, 15 seconds left. Probably just a few more plays before we wrap this up here. So incomplete over the middle here. Second and goal. I remember covering a game at Louisville years ago. It was the one where Miami got beat and kind of drew some controversy with midfield and stepping on midfield in there. So out to Brevin Jordan. Oh, okay. Brevin gets the touchdown. I know it's not a huge deal, but it is cool to see that he gets it right before the time runs out with our first quarter simulation here. So, And I think that that play is what you're hoping to see from Brevin in the sense that you can get him out in space out to a sideline and with the defender he can use his strength to get by a smaller defender so he's got that ability as a tight end to move off the line to catch passes not just in the middle of the field against linebackers in that matchup which is great because you believe he's got that mismatch against a lot of guys but he can also go outside a little bit and use his strength to his advantage so that's good to see that yards after the catch is big. I think Brevin's made strides in that from his freshman year to his sophomore year. More yards after the catch. His yards per catch as a freshman needed to improve, and there's different reasons why it was low, but definitely good to see it move forward. And if this simulation is any indication, there's potential of him even improving on that even more. That's Etheridge there. Louisville defenders, so that's, they're talking it out. Miami enjoying the 7-0 lead. Cunningham's getting ready to go back out there again. So yeah, the big thing that stands out to me with Louisville is their speed, and they've got to make improvements on the defensive side of the ball. And if they do, there's reasons why people like them as a team to show a vast improvements from a year ago. Because essentially the, the three most important pieces to a team, obviously to an offense, they're all in place. Having those building blocks are so important when you're trying to move forward with your program. There's Atwell on the return. So here we go. we got one final play. Let's see if it's a big one for the Hurricanes before we wrap this up. Once again, drop in the comments if you want to see another team. I've seen some suggestions. The There's some I've seen, and trust me, I haven't missed the them. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football. There we go. That's to Jade Silvera. That's great to see. That's a way to finish off the quarter. It's good to see. Stop the run. Defense looked pretty good in the quarter. Louisville will certainly be a test. It's certainly a challenge. Just want to thank everybody for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Be sure to check out InsideTheU.com for all your coverage of the Miami Hurricanes, and you can follow me on Twitter at InsideTheU. Thanks again, and take care.